You are actually, first off, let's get right off to the bat. This is actually going to be the first. I'm going to turn up this ISO. I'm sorry. This is so unprofessional of me. This, you're the first guest on the Technically of Created to Create Dang. podcast. Sick. Should be fun. Hopefully. I hope so. <laughs> We're not even like in I hope technically. We have some good questions here. Cause. I hope so. Um, I actually kind of want to dive in to kind of give some people context about who you are, uh, just what you do, and just like all that general stuff. Kind of a little yeah. backstory from where you started, and then we'll kind of get into more of it after. Yeah, I'm uh, Michael Easterling, go by Gerald um, from Oceanside, California, and have been doing I'm a photographer videographer and graphic designer kind of been doing majority photo for the last taking it seriously for the last I say three years but grew up shooting film had my dad's original like 35 millimeter film camera that's actually something I was going to ask is um what was your first memorable moment of holding it like a camera and saying that this is like kind of what you want to do for the rest of your life well when I was when I got my dad's camera, he I got it when I was sick, fifteen, and it was the it's a Canon eighty one program, and it was his original camera that he bought when he was, I don't know when he was eighteen, and <clears throat> I didn't really want to be a photographer. <laughs> I took a I took an eighth grade like camera class, and we were taking pictures of leaves and bugs, <laughs> and. I was like, oh, this is interesting. And it kind of piqued my interest, and I always had an eye for it, and I was always told that, but it was never my creative output. I did worship, and I was uh, I played piano and sang in high school for church and in choir, and that was my creative out- outlet. I never really did um, photo, and then my dad handed me this film camera, and I was like, oh, what's this? And started shooting film and did mainly 35 millimeter film developed my closet turned my closet into a dark room which was and then when did you um when was that when you started film like how old uh like 15 15 15 16 is when my dad gave me that camera and then i shot for so about nine ish years now starting technically yeah technically i took so i did film for like three years straight and I was probably shooting two to three rolls a week of 35 millimeter film. Okay. And it was kind of, I mean, that, I got a job at 16 running a bike shop in Oceanside, and that's where all my money was going to. Yeah. was gas, food, yeah. and film. And people always joke about that, but it was, it was what I wanted to figure out and how to do it. And I thought it was cool because it took me back. And I feel like film is such a raw yeah. thing. Um, digital is instantaneous and you can take a hundred photos mm-hmm. and film you have 36 typically and, and it costs you a lot of money at the same time a lot of money yeah the roll of film for portrait is like i don't know five like six dollars and well sometimes more than that and it's i think with scans it's like 27 bucks to get developed and scan yep which is absurd uh i think and that's why i developed all my film in my closet because it saved me a lot of money um but yeah, then I moved to Texas in 2016 to go to Baylor University and took this big like gap from doing photo. Okay. Like I didn't do, I didn't really do photo cause I was kind of tired of it. And, and that's how you got to Texas is by going to college out to there. Going to Baylor. Yeah. Yeah. I was supposed to play golf and broke my clavicle mountain biking like seven months before. And I didn't have a spot on the team at Baylor, but I was going to walk on. I was been talking to the coach and Obviously, that didn't happen. Yep. And I roomed. I split a room with a friend of mine who is from Carlsbad. He moved out there, Jordan Brown. And he, um, great photographer, great graphic designer, videographer, longtime friend. And he got the new Sony a7 II when it came out. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Mirrorless. Oh, it's so small. I'd always shot with Nikon growing up because I didn't really get into digital until... Really? So Nikon was like your first digital. Mm-hmm. That was my, my dad's Nikon D200. Which I feel was like, like we don't so even old. hear Nikon anymore. No, no, because Sony is so far ahead of the game when yeah. it comes to mirrorless. And yeah. And no one. Especially I mean, in even 2021 with like yeah. last month they've released two new cameras. Yeah. I feel like Sony's, I mean, Sony's just crushing it with cameras and um, Nikon was the first 
DSLR camera, I guess I had. And I mean, it was fine, I, but I never really took it seriously. Yeah. I didn't get into editing. I would just shoot photos to shoot photos. And film was always that go to for me just because it was so raw. And after living with Jordan, he did film it and then started getting into digital and had always done digital. But I was like, dang, maybe I'll buy a camera. And my friend let me use his Nikon D750. Okay. Which Nikon native user just from messing around with my dad's was like, oh, cool. Like this will this will be sweet. And took that and kind of ran with it. And for five or six months, he let me borrow his camera, which <laughs> was not a cheap camera. It was like $2,000, $1,800 camera for just like, hey, yeah, go ahead and use it. Never thought that would happen. And you, And then I bought a... Sony a seven two. This is taking you back into college now taking um, you. Yeah. This was after, I guess this was a year and a half into college two two years into college. And it was right before I went to Indonesia to Bali on a mission trip in 2018. Okay. So <clears throat> I bought that camera for no, I don't really like when did I buy that camera for? I think I really just wanted to have a digital camera. Yeah. I wasn't really looking at like figuring out how to do it. And then after I started shooting, I was like, all right, well, maybe I could do this. I got the Adobe subscription because it was half off for students. I was like, oh, sick. Start messing around. And I think I prided myself in, oh, I'm never going to buy a preset. Mm-hmm. And I'm never going to watch a video on how to edit photos. I just want to figure it out. And how long did that last you for? Um... Still to this day, haven't bought a preset. Really? And I've watched. I don't really watch videos to copy them. It was more so of watching videos like, what the heck is a tone curve? Mm-hmm. So it's like actually just like trying to learn. Yes. Like actually not messing around because when I was messing around with the tone curve, I'm like, this will look horrible. And then after I watched a video, I would make minor adjustments and play with. And then probably a year ago, I started using um, red green and blue on the tone curve rather okay. than just like your shadows highlights and blacks and i was like whoa that can change a whole image just yeah. from doing that and that is when i kind of i was like all right i think i can do this and that has i mean if you would have told me i guess it's three years three years ago two years ago that i would be doing like photography and mm-hmm. being paid to do it and like going on a tour for a couple days for a Christian music artist and doing being like a creative lead at church and senior photos, do the whole senior photos thing at Baylor and all of these other things shooting for brands. I would have I'm like, whatever. And still and, talking to this right now. I'm like, hmm. Whoa. I was like, sometimes we need to sit back and just be thankful for like, dang. Oh God, yeah. God's given me this gift. And I feel like sometimes we hold them in our hands with a close fist it's like, all right, God, thank you for this gift. You gave it to me. I'm going to use it when God's like, open your hand. Let me yeah. put more on your hand and let me move it where you want to move. Because I would have never thought of, about doing tour photography. Mm. Through my church, I met Torn Wells. And this was at Waco? And this was in Waco. And I went out on tour with him for three of his shows in Texas. Okay. And that was like, hands down, if somebody said, hey, we're going to bring you on tour for three months, I'd drop everything and go. Really? Like it changed. I'd figured out on that trip or on that, I guess, tour that I wanted to use my gift to promote other people's giftings, yeah. talents, or like products. Okay. And that was when it was like, all right, this is what I think I want to do. And we'll see what happens. I really, this year and last year, because of COVID, has really taught me to kind of expand and not hold just photography as, oh, this is my gift. Yeah, okay. Like, And what has that been looking like for you with the types of different gifts? Uh, video for... So for the church in Waco, I was one of the original members. It's called Glory Bell Church. Okay. It was launched in September of 2019 by Pastors Chuck and Ashley. They're based originally from Houston, moved to Waco. And I was their guest experience leader to begin with. And then January of 2020, I took over like creative. So I was doing photo video graphic stuff COVID happened in March yeah we're a brand new church didn't have an online presence really and we're like uh what do we do I'm like well I'll figure it out and in like three weeks learned how to shoot edit 
do really bad audio because we didn't have any equipment. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so I had to like start ground like, up. Yep, learn how to shoot and log in like two weeks. Okay, that's I I watch videos on how to shoot video. <laughs> yep, but not photo. Like I've never, I don't know why. I told somebody that probably like a year ago. I'm like I'm never gonna buy a preset, and I think it was just more so of a. I want other people to buy mine, which is mm. funny, but I'm never going to buy somebody's. Um, do you, have you ever created your own like LUT? Um, not my own LUT. Yeah. But I mean, I have probably like 15 presets that I've, okay. that I've made that are variations of something similar. Um, and it's for the most part over time, it is just a, well, let's figure it out. And I swear four of my presets that I like majority of the photos on my feed. Okay are from presets that like accidentally made that's like, dope and typically every photo that is my favorite photo is from something that is out of the blue not planned yeah it's take taking it a little bit back actually i kind of wanted to hit a point when you start saying like that we kind of got caught up to 2020 here we are in 2021 now mm-hmm. How, what affected you the most like maybe it was for your career, maybe it was for uh, videography, but like how you were saying with the church, what affected you the most in 2020 with your creativity? And then also, uh, side note, like how did it bring you back to California? Dang, yeah, um, that's a question that I've asked myself a lot. Um, coming back to California was for parents. Okay. It didn't really have. I think half of me made it. Oh, I'm going to grow my feel like grow my skills and be more of this brand photographer rather than portrait photographer and start working with these brands. But in turn, it turned into a parents thing. Parents got a divorce in March of last year. And that was something I'm like, all right, I need to move home. It's time for me to move back. Cause I had no intention of moving back. Okay. I was in Texas for four years, which is wild to think about for the most part, loved it. And I mm-hmm. just had this really big draw. I'm like, I really want to move home. And I prayed a lot about it. And I said, Lord, if this is something that you really see me doing and there's something for me out there, then let me sell everything. And I sold like my couch, my TV, my desk, everything in like two weeks. Oh, wow. Three weeks moved. Wow. Quit my job. And I was like, all right, I'm moving back to California. And then I was unemployed for four months because everyone I didn't have a networking base actually. Yeah. So everyone's budget was absolute and garbage. everyone was also unemployed basically at the same everyone time. Everyone was unemployed as well as moved back to the city that has the most photographers ever is San Diego, I feel like. And was unemployed starting to outreach and network with people and then got a job which is the job I'm currently working at out in Cardiff. And I just needed to get a day job. Like, yeah, it bums me out because I've had to say no to so many great opportunities, mm-hmm. which is ironic. Um, but it's been a really cool opportunity just learning at this company. But it's also made me take a step back of, hey, what do I really want to do with my photography yeah. or my video? Because COVID, I learned a lot from it. And, hey, this is what you need to do. <laughs> this is how you need to learn. Yep stretching out these gifts okay i'm i'm pretty good at photo like i feel really confident in it but let's do video now and, and you I don't, just started your video journey basically last year or yeah technically in march of last year was like figuring out how the heck to do it mm. and now recently it's starting to turn more into cinematic stuff and wanting to get more and what's that cinematic. been like looking like because i definitely know it's like photography and uh, video like videography is like definitely two different worlds very similarities yeah like even like going to balance like down to the, like the shutter speed completely like completely different, different ballpark like understanding the shutter how it works in video compared to how it works in photos so what's that journey been looking like for you yeah the video side it's more so of <laughs> like editing the video not really? color grading because color grading like color science for the most part i think my brain kind of understands okay and if i have a base lut i can grade the rest of it and figure out what i want it to look like um but it's more so like transitions and little like fun stuff yeah that i don't understand just because there's so much that goes into it and after effects is another thing that can make your videos that much better which is a completely different beast and how much do you focus on the story aspect of when you're oh that's that's all i want to do yeah when it comes to photo 
it's so much easier when you're taking like photography or taking photos like you take that one shot and that one shot can tell a story in itself but then right. when you take a video that's literally like you have to plan out the entire shot yeah. like and that could be like a six second shot and you're like those six seconds are like way more important than those like yeah no and photo. i think and i think photo one thing there's funny th- so when i first got my sony i still have this i still want to do it and it was going to be called random encounters i think is what my original like book idea was and when i i literally had this camera for like two weeks and i was in encinitas walking by lofty coffee and there's this girl sitting on the like on the brick wall i was like hey I was like, can I take a picture of you? She was like, sure. And still to this day, it's one of my favorite photos. And it's her sitting on a brick wall, smoking a cigarette, exhaling the smoke. And there, it, I can show that photo a hundred people and every single person will say the same thing on what she's feeling, what she just did or where she came from. Hmm. And I've asked probably 20 of my friends. Okay. And I'd say every single one has said the same, roughly the same thing. And okay. the thing about photo is I can do that and you can feel it for that instance. Video, the one thing I really appreciate with films or with short little 10 second videos is I feel like there's more of a heart pull and then more of a tug of like, oh, I want to see what happens next. Yeah. When in a photo, it's like, it's happened. It's done. Holy crap, I feel all this emotion. Yeah. It's like part A, part B, and part yes. C of the entire story. Yes. Like the setup, there's the climax and that. But now in video, it's like a long Yeah, in video, I want to like... I That is my biggest thing is I don't necessarily want to make the hype videos. Yeah. Like I don't. It's not something that interests me. I want to make the long like 20-minute cinematic, very like moving, just beautiful shots with voiceover okay <laughs> like that's do you want to get into like short documentary filmmaking yeah i would love to i okay. think that's something with the whole tour photography thing that one of the biggest skills that i didn't have that i missed out on was i was just a photographer at that time yeah because that tour happened in 2019 in october or no i don't know fall of 2019 sometime and i would hand like learning video and learning graphics changes the whole game because you're more marketable. You're not just getting hired to go on tour for three months just to do photo. You're getting hired to do video and graphics, yeah. run their social media, it's like do local marketing. Part. And I'm like, well now I can do all that. And I want to, the dream for me with, I love partnering with music artists and that's ultimately like, I want to do the making of a song. Like how did they make that? I want to go in depth, go in the studio. how do you make it? Okay. And then learn like, okay, what was the inspiration of the song? And then go into like a live recording. Yeah. And the cool thing about that <coughs> for tour would be to go out on the road with somebody and film the tour and turn it into a mini documentary. And how do you see your, like that process of like, I would say like happening, like what steps are you like taking right now to try to get to your like success to like be where you're doing documentary filmmaking? Like, yeah, th- as a living one day. I think um, just little baby steps with. I think with COVID. This is one. I, this is one thing I always, I talk about, and I don't know. You could agree with me on this, but COVID, I think, for the most part, taught a lot of the world about creatives. <laughs> yep. And like what we do on a daily basis, and what we go through, and how we struggle, and I think as creatives we focus more on good content and yeah. focus more on creating good stuff rather than our community and our culture and our people around us. Okay. Like we focus more on creating good content. And we kind of left all that. And that was my, my saying for this year is let's create more culture over just good content. Yeah. Because you posting something about that, talking about like creating like a better culture, creating like, yeah. Energy, creating when you like see that. any film, like if you watch, Let's say the Avengers movies, just for example. Every single one of those people are friends and they're family. Yeah. That's why the movies are so good. They have matching tattoos. Like, yeah. <laughs> they have they have the original six have the matching tattoos. And um, like when you see all these big feature films or these documentaries or little things like, hey, yeah, we work really well together. We're a family. Yeah. Like that you don't see like, oh, this guy's a jerk. He sucks at his job. Like you don't ever hear that. <laughs> 
you, it's all about culture. Like that's what, and culture is different depending on where you go. And I get that, but it's more so of, Hey, how are you treating the people around you? How are you adding value to their life? Okay. My biggest thing is add value to people. Use your gifts to add value to them. And out of that, I think culture goes up and then out of good culture comes great content. Yeah. And kind of going to that, building my community around me and, and I, I'm starting to create this like creative space for me every day because I'm back in school now and I'm back getting my bachelor's degree because I took time off from Baylor to launch the church. So I went to Baylor for two years, dropped out to launch a church, for, did that for 18 months, and then I went back to school. And Are your school down here now? I'm back in Texas, so it's oh, online. Okay. So with work, 40 hours a week, and then with school, I don't really have as much time to create as much as I would like, so I have to set a time. Okay. This is an hour a day of creating. Like, create something. Make a graphic. Learn something. Yeah. Set time aside for a creative gift because sometimes if we don't, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks go by and we're like, we haven't done anything. Yeah. And then you're like, having so you're pinning those like kind <laughs> of like creative, I wouldn't say cons- uh, constraints, but kind of like you're pinning like a creative, like, hey, this is, needs to happen. This is like kind of a creative requirement. Yeah, it's 100%. And it's discipline. like, it doesn't need to be anything like great. It doesn't need to be like over the top creative, yep. but it's also just like making sure that you're constantly getting behind the camera, constantly right. behind the laptop editing yep. yeah and it could be the smallest thing from re-editing 10 photos mm. my favorite photo is just going back and re-editing just because it gets me in the creative mindset it helps me escape things around me of oh i had a crappy day at work yeah. let me get in my gift and learning from it because i just don't want I, I don't want to go another day without like i didn't learn anything today mm. i always want to have a learning mindset and it's all discipline like it's all Hey, get in the books. Learn about color science. Yeah. My friend Jack and I were talking about color science and how crazy it is. There's so much that goes into color science. <laughs> <laughs> People don't realize that you're like, oh my gosh, this is a, I mean, like a two inch book just full oh of color gosh, science. Yeah. You're like, holy crap. And that yeah. is probably my biggest thing for 2021 is culture over content, but also be disciplined in your giftings by setting time aside every day to practice okay. it. And then um, going into the, actually that, because that was actually a question hitting, like uh, what projects in 2021 you're, are you most excited about? Yeah, I hopefully, fingers crossed, tour happens. Okay. Um, Hoping I'll, everything reopens. Yeah, who the heck knows? I know Torn is out on tour with Toby Mac right now for the Hits Deep tour. Um who knows? Torn, if you ever watch this, make sure and give me a call in August. Uh, <laughs> um, I love Sh- I mean, the original tour was awesome. Like, it changed my perspective. And it was uh, something I was like, holy crap, I would love to do this for the rest of my life. Even though it is very, like, it is very difficult living on a bunk for three months. I can't imagine. Like, it's it's a lot of work. Like, With, the, like, other people, I'm assuming, yeah, too. there's 12 people on a bus. Oh, yeah. Like, and you're living on a, on a bunk and it's, people could start butting heads. Like people will start butting heads, but in your band and your family, but it's more so just like you're traveling for three months straight on a bus. Yeah. It's a lot. It's so, not like arguments, but it's more like, yo, did you just take my underwear? Like not even that. Yeah, just, just literally, like, just literally just, smallest thing. Huh? Yeah. Like you're just trapped. I mean, it's just small space. Everyone knows. Like you go on a vacation with your family for a week and you're like. I'm going to murder this person. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I love you guys, but Gosh, I Gosh, mean, Dana, Jake, I can't believe you did that yeah. again. You're like, literally, you're like, we've known each other for our whole lives and I hate you. <laughs> you're like, sorry, I dislike you a lot. Uh, but yeah, so tour, hopefully, fingers crossed, tour happens. That would be sweet. But dude, in reality, I really just want to, as I said earlier, like use, I really mean this, use my gifts to promote other people's. And that is working with music artists to create those videos of them in the studio or them creating music, yeah. writing music. Um, I'm a part of this really cool thing called Beach Chapel Sessions, and we hold worship nights on the other pier once a month. And the end goal of that is to have every pier in California once a month have a worship night 
Mm, and cool. it's a collaboration of creatives. So photo, video, graphic designers, music artists, and we all come together and worship the Lord on the end of a pier. We started with like 15 people and then went, I think our last one was like 400. Oh my God. Which is crazy. And I really, the more and more this year goes on and last year, it's like, all right, my space is with artists. Yeah. Like that's what I really would love to do. And, but it's also my other side of me is I do like product. Mm-hmm. Like, because I find a lot of value in other people adding value to me. And if I can do that to them, <laughs> like Ashland Hard Seltzer is a local company in Cardiff. Yeah. And I've, I'm doing some work for them right now and taking photos. And I told them, I was like, I don't really care if you post my name. Or, like, who I am, because that's not what it's about. Like, I'm not necessarily out here building my personal brand. If my personal brand is going to grow, it's going to grow. Yeah. Like, not because of 15 people tagged me today. Because mm-hmm. Instagram's algorithm sucks. Yep. I was actually just talking to <laughs> someone recently how Instagram's um, algorithm, or just how Instagram works, kills creativity. 100%. It's like, what does well on Instagram, what, like, the algorithm wants is, like, literally photos that are, like, so unrelated to, like, life and 100%. community. Like, it's organic marketing is out the roof, and they don't care about good content, and that's what COVID did. Yeah, and imagine, like, you go on a trip to, like, some crazy place. You're not taking photos of um, friends. You're not taking photos of family, the food you ate, like, the places you saw. You're just taking photos of, like, the waterfall. Yeah. Like no, the cool drone like, shot, like the Boehner shots that do yeah. good on Instagram. Because that's what people, it's all about the hype and being a part of this, ooh, I got a million subscribers. or And, dude, freaking success in the creative world isn't about how good you are anymore, yeah. and it sucks. And I think what's also interesting, though, is like when you do talk about a lot, like I feel like definitely photographers and videographers mm-hmm. in the creative world who like, sure, become an influence. Like, yeah. for example, Peter McKenna. Yeah. Huge name, yeah. but I bet if he like didn't have the million subscribers, he'd still be yeah. posting the same stuff because yeah. he loves to do it. Yeah, and that's that was my thing is, is it really shows through your like how much you love your craft, mm. and that is something that through end of last year I kind of got burnt out a little bit, and I feel like a lot of creatives did because we had to produce so much because we knew people were gonna sit on their couch and look at yeah. their phones. And I think there was this big rise of great content, and then there was this dip of oh, yeah. not anything, which I knew I was a case of that because I was doing church stuff for four months because the pandemic happened. And then I went to like this plateau of like not producing anything, and then everything started going back up. And now there's content coming out. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Yeah. Like, this content is crazy. Mm-hmm. And it's great, but there's so much of it now. Yep. And. I it's like just I read probably st- too much to even consume at some point. Oh, yeah. I mean, I read a statistic. I think it was like it's easier to be done. I think Peter actually said this a while back. He said it's easier to become like an astronaut or something than to become a YouTube creator. Yeah. Like a like a legit popular YouTube creator. And like I think that's crazy. I think it's also interesting on the same note, though. I think a lot of platforms, not including YouTube, are realizing the importance of the middle class creators. 100%. So everyone that's like not making the subscribers and or like have the millions of subscribers yeah. because the entire platform is the majority people is middle class, like smaller subscribers, yeah. all the content, even YouTube. So it's interesting seeing like that travel. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, and I think a lot of people don't out like don't undercut competition because then you're just screwing all the people over. Yeah. That actually do this for a living. Like, I've met so many people that, and it sucks because I have literally just talked to somebody about this the other day. Of like, hey, this is my price. Sorry. And they're like, well, our friend's going to do it for like 50 bucks. I'm like, for $50? They're like, yeah, they're just getting into it. I'm like, okay. And that right there is everyone is starting to get into this creative field. And mm-hmm. when you're it's like, hey, you do pay for something. Like, you do pay for this expertise. Can you press you record on my that? camera? Sorry. <laughs> Hard cut. Well, I am sorry to everyone who's listening for that noise, eh? And then everyone who's watching. Oh, yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> for that, that noise. Family, the noise. Uh, You're just like. I don't know what I was saying, but in turn, it was. 
I was taught. Oh, don't undercut like. It don't really, undercut creators. Yeah, it really bums me out. People are, people are saying, "Oh yeah, I can do it for free. I'll hook it up." Like I lost a wedding for that. I shot random proposals out on the pier in San Clemente at a beach shop session, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Oh yeah, dude. Like I'm definitely interested. Let me know." And then his cousin and said, "Hey, yeah, I'll shoot it for free." Yep. And like I'm all for it. like. If it was me, I'd probably save money too. Yeah. Like, that sounds dumb to say. But it, it's a bummer because more of that is happening. And it's taking away this business from... And so people. many people want to get into this industry too, which makes it even so much harder. Yeah, That's yeah. actually kind of one of my last questions is actually talk about mm-hmm. um, what do you think it takes to make it in this industry? And whatever industry this is creative. Freaking luck. <laughs> uh, there's a little bit of like 5% of that, but... No, dude, I think it really, um, you can be the most talented photographer ever, yeah. the most talented videographer ever, but if you're like a butthole <laughs> and you don't have good community and you don't have a good network of people around you and you don't treat people well and love on people well, you're not going to get hired. Yeah. And I think... So many people get hired based off their personality and how they work well with others rather than their skill set. Hmm. And I think that has a lot to do with it. I think meeting the right people and obviously knowing the right people and getting your foot in the right door and just like, what was the, I think what Matt McConaughey said this? He's like, don't half ass it. Hmm. It's a true thing. He's like, don't just give 10%. He's like, if you're going to do it, then. Yeah. Go 100% and give it your all and, and run for the hills. So I think that's definitely a, I mean, a lesson to learn for a lot of people. Just like, hey, when you pick up this, don't. Yeah. Like, like take. I, I was actually kind of like this one quote I heard. I was listening to a podcast on my way here. Yep. It's, um, technically, it's not from Abraham Lincoln, but they pretended it was from Abraham Lincoln. So here I am pretending it's from Abraham okay, Lincoln. <laughs> um, it was Imagine talking. The beard. Uh, yep. And the hat. The hat going, the beard. Yeah, that's it. I kind of did the opposite there okay, on the yeah. video. <laughs> I said, this is my beard. This is my hat. Hey, that's okay. It's 2021. Create something new. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> um, but the point was going to be talking about, like, if you're cutting down a tree um, and you have six hours to cut down a tree, I'm going to spend the four, first four hours uh sharpening the axe Mm -hmm. so that's prepping yourself like Mm -hmm. actually like and it could be like you said studying the color science yeah just literally studying or staying consistent and like actually still practicing your craft because it can't be just like simply i don't know just like going out and trying to like succeed at something Mm -hmm. when you could be just getting tired some and like where you kind of need to reflect on yourself and like actually make sure you're getting poured into by community 100%. and that you're pouring into community as well. I think having huge. a mentor figure of some sort is very important just because you get outside of your own mind of, Oh yeah, I'm doing so well when you have somebody yeah. else you're like, dude, you, eh, I don't really like this. And my <clears throat> the biggest thing that I think overall arching like last year was um, I don't want to create for other people. Like I don't want to create, Oh, you should do this because it looks cool. I'm mm. going to create for what I want to create and things that I want to do. And I've had this idea of doing this video for for artists for like the last, I don't know, probably four years I've had this idea. And other people have done it, sure. Yeah. But I've realistic, I'm like, I want to tell a story through, no one knows what artists go through to write a song. <laughs> yeah. Like no one does. Except like, artists. Except the artists. And that's why I was like, okay, well, let's see what happens. And I think 2021 is going to be a good one for a lot of people. And I think in the end, it's like stay disciplined, learn something new every day, and and kind of wake wake up with thankfulness. Just be like, all right, Lord, thanks for this gift because it ain't mine. <laughs> yeah. You can take it away, and here's my hand opened with it sitting right there. Use it the way you want to use it. So Cool. Glory to God. Roll that outro. Uh, That's where today's video is going to be coming to an end. It was honestly such a great time spending with Michael and just getting to know him and getting to know his passion and how he got started in his craft. If you are excited to see more of these episodes, you definitely should try to leave a rating. It helps the show out and helps the podcast for more people to discover. And until next week or the next one, I'll see you then.